Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, you might have guessed by the intro, I got a complete coverage of Aptasia. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I did some research, and from my past experience, I merged those two and how to, uh, how to actually get Aptasia nowadays and how to get rid of it. So I did, people that follow me know what I do, I do like uh, bullet points upon the research and my own personal experiences and I'm going to talk briefly about him and how you can try to get rid of them. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you find it educational and fun. So let's take a deep dive into it and check it out. Hold on. Okay, so here we are. First of all, the first question that I'm faced with and everybody is, can Aptasia come with corals? Well, definitely yes. As a matter of fact, everybody, every tank, I'll bet my money on them, they all have Aptasia. Uh, sometimes you don't see them, they're on the back panel, they might be in the crevices of the rocks, but trust me, everybody, every reef keeper, reefer, does have Aptasia. Now, of course, what I'm focused at is at a frag plug, which I'm gonna talk about it now. Now, but before I get into it, a patient can come in, let's say, in a, in a colony, you know, a, a, a coral colony, you know, like, let's say, frog span or, or a colony of, uh, what, of zoantes or pipe organ. Uh, and then another thing, which is why I'm focused at this, is an actual plug. Okay, now I'm going to go around the camera and I'm going to use the pointer that I use from my feeder. And then, okay, here, using the point, Okay, this is, of course, this is a, a, a regular plug, as you see. Now, what it's been known and it's been found is that that's one of the reasons why you must dip all your corals. Aptasia sometimes is found here. It is found underneath the actual plug, like where the stem is. That's what has been uh, known uh, to observe that no matter if you dip the corals, but you don't inspect this. You don't inspect this part of the plug, the actual stem, like around, like uh, underneath the actual plug, sometimes Aptasias are there. So that's one thing that you should check uh, when you're checking, you know, of course, for Aptasia. Another thing is that once you have Aptasia, you, you see it, what they highly recommend is that as soon as you see one little of these anemones, kill it. Take it out of the tank immediately. Because what happens is that if you don't and you find it cute and interesting and all that, uh, that is going to throw eggs and then you're going to have another one and another one and it can go on and on and on. Now, another thing that happens, which is what actually happened to me, uh, is the overfeeding. You see, I, I had recently, I had gotten some uh, different varieties of coral foods from uh, Bridewell Aquatics. And what I did was, you know, usually uh, everybody says, no, I, you know, you, when you go to the different channels, you'll hear, oh, I feed my corals a lot and a lot and a lot, which is true. So I say, hey, wait a minute, let me uh, try that. So besides the trace elements People that follow me know that I'm using Replenish, and let me tell you, it's phenomenal. I started to feed more and more and more. So what happens with the issue of Aptasia, what happens is that then if you have Aptasia and you start to feed more, you know, in other words, more nutrients into the tank, it's going to blow up. And then you're going to have Aptasia all over the place, which is what you saw in my intro shots. I mean, it's like a rug of Optasia. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus uh, the camera to the tank and I'm going to go to the other topics of how to eliminate the actual Optasias. So hold on one second while set up. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to bring up is how to decrease the population of Optasia. You notice I'm not titling this how to eliminate, but instead how to decrease. Because like I said before, everybody sooner or later is going to slip 
uh, you're not going to catch it or it's not that just it's your fault but sometimes they're very impossible to actually uh, see them it might be just the eggs so one thing the main bullet point of course is always dip your corals definitely always dip your corals that's very important and then when you dip your corals as you're blasting them with your turkey baser and all that um, of course you know if you want to use gloves to grab the uh, plug the actual you know the, the frag go ahead and inspect what I was showing you previously when it comes to the actual frag plug inspect underneath where that uh, where the stem is inspected well if you have like let's say like in my case I have a toothbrush uh, dedicated for the tank go go ahead and brush it you know with the um, liquid that you're using to dip the uh, corals and inspect them is that if you see that there's a possibility or a hunch that you do have optatia then once you observe that plug underneath where the stem is just detach it uh, cut the uh, frag off and just glue it to your actually um, actual uh, rock work I know that uh, a lot of people they don't recommend that they say that you should at least keep the upper portion of the plug but if you have a suspicion uh, what I would say is just like I said before observe the frag plugs and then and or if you have a suspicion then just detach it and discard the uh, plug and then just go ahead and get the uh, frag and just glue it to the actual uh, work, rock work if you look at this shot as I'm speaking and I'm rolling the camera on this section if you look at the um, the Monte Digi that I'm pointing at okay that one the uh, plug actually I uh, I had it glued with the actual plug now this didn't have to do with Aptasia but what happened is it actually fell from the plug when I was cutting the the stem because what I do in my case is all the uh, frags that I buy from wherever I buy them of course they all come with the stem and don't ask you they are supposed to ask you you want me to cut off the stem yes or no some people say no others say yes I usually say yes to cut the stem off in this case I didn't so when I was cutting the stem it actually uh, came on uh, on glue from the actual frog plug so what I did is I, I prepared the putty uh, that I use and then uh, you know I, I mixed it and all that I made a little ball and then I put like I've seen like you guys have seen on my previous videos I went ahead uh, I put some um, frag glue on one side and the other and then I went ahead and I just glued it there now that's what I'm referring to when it comes to detaching the actual plug that one I didn't do it because of Aptasia but more or less I'm just giving you an idea what it actually would look like you really can't tell because on the bottom it looks like a little white which is the actual putty and it is it's actually the yeah I mean it looks like it fits the, the top of, of, a, of a frag but uh, of a frag plug but it's, it's not it's actually the putty with the glue that I, I stuck the uh, the uh, frag in and then when it oozes out it looks like the actual frag plug which eventually if this coral does good which is actually starting to, to grow I actually see some growth patterns on one of those three little um, protrusions that you see so that's what I was referring to when I'm talking about you know that if you see something fishy or suspicion just uh, discard it take of the uh, coral uh, detach it from the actual plug and then just uh, glue it on your rock matter of fact um, it's a 50 50 call to be honest with you I've seen videos and I've talked to people some either a glue the uh, frag with a frag plug stem and everything into the rock work others they cut the stem off that I, I belong to B to that one and then C uh, they just go in and they completely take the frag plug off and they just glue the actual frag onto the rock work now that it's more of a 50 50 chance that you're not going to introduce Aptasia because Aptasia like I was saying before 
uh, they tend to colonize on the plug on the bottom, like I mentioned and I demonstrated it on the stem. So that would be much more of a less chance that you would introduce Aptasia to your actual tank. And then uh, the uh, final things of how to get rid of it is, of course, you can use Aptasia eating fowlfish. Uh, I've, have, uh, I, I've never used a fowlfish to eat Aptasia, but I have done research, you know, Eddie the researcher, and I have found that it's a 50-50 call. They will eat Aptasia. Now, when they run out of Aptasia, uh, and they see a coral that looks more or less like Aptasia. Well, I'm talking about club polyps, ozoantes. There's a chance that they'll pick on it. They'll start to eat corals. Because they cannot uh, differentiate sometimes from an Aptasia to something that looks similar. Like I, I just mentioned, either a, a zoantis or a club polyp. So that's a risk that you're taking there when it comes to a fowlfish. The other one is that you can use uh, Aptasia eating uh, invertebrates, like for instance, you can use the peppermint shrimp or the Bergia, I think, I hope I pronounced it right, Bergia nudibranch. Okay, now going first to the Bergia uh, nudibranch. I happen to have, uh, have bought two of them. I placed them in the tank, no cigars, nothing happened. I went on and I started to ask and look around and all that. The problem is that those nudibranchs, uh, they're overpriced. No matter where you go, they are uh, overpriced. You can get them cheaper somewhere in another place, LFS, on and on, online. But they all in general are overpriced. Now, uh, saying that, the problem comes that with two, like I have purchased, or three or four is not going to be enough. You have to get tons of them. You have to get a lot of these uh, nudibranchs to make an actual effect. They do work. They do actually, they will, you know, actually eat the Aptasia. But the problem is that being uh, the case that they're overpriced, you will need about two to three hundred dollars worth of nudibranchs to really get them to actually eat the, I mean, you know, to eat the Aptasia. In my case, which is completely full of Aptasias. And I personally, Eddie, of Eddie Ruiz of Korea, would refuse to do that. Because with two or three hundred dollars, the final step would be get rid of the rocks, uh, get some uh, a new uh, rocks and start, you know, do like what they call a, a reset. And that definitely is not going to cost uh, not even a hundred dollars. So that's the, the problem with the uh, Bergia. Again, I hope I pronounced it right, the, the nudibranchs. They do work. And uh, they will spawn, and, you know, throw eggs and spawn in your tank, but you need a lot of them. And then the, the cost, you know, really, I don't know what to tell you. And then, of course, the, the peppermint shrimp. That's what, what I have now. Now, uh, this past weekend, I went ahead and I bought three uh, peppermint shrimps you have to acclimate them they're inverts so you acclimate them like if you acclimate a fish and i threw them in now with the peppermint shrimps what you have to do is uh they actually uh, work in packs they're scavengers so you cannot get one you you should get at least three or five or six uh, of course depending on the size of the tank this is a, a 40 gallon as all of you must be aware so three it's more th than enough and they're scavengers now with that being said, uh, you have to like starve them. You cannot uh, feed your fish every day because if you do that, whatever falls, you know, whatever food that you're feeding the, the fish that they don't eat and it goes down, they are going to eat the, the food. Then if they're not hungry, they aren't going to go for the Aptasia. So what I've done now uh, is that instead of feeding my fish every day, I'm starting to feed him every other day. And then uh, one thing that I uh, thought that I mentioned that I believe I said before is uh, bring bring down your uh, feeding, bring down your, your nutrients. Of course, like I just mentioned when it comes to the fish, I went ahead and I'm feeding the fish every other day. So the 
uh, peppermint shrimps are not eat feeding from the fish food every day and then they'll go ahead and hopefully and as scavengers that they are they'll go ahead and they'll start eating the optasia and then like i mentioned before when it comes to the nutrients of feeding the corals pull back on that because that i think was my uh, mistake i went ahead and i and I, I was feeding every day uh well except sunday monday through saturday i was feeding uh reef roids and cold pots and rotifers and um uh, color in, enhancing food for the corals and then what happened is if I had three or four or five or six I'm, I'm feeding them too so they said thank you Eddie and that's it they went ahead and they ran all around the actual tank well that's it I hope you found the video educational and informative but before I thought I mentioned that all of you out there I hope you had a great Christmas happy holidays Happy New Year and that all of your wishes come true in this new year. So like I say at the end, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Of course, and subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell. And as I say also at the end of all of my videos and on this new year, on and on, happy reefing. Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.